Hi, my name is Alex. I'm the general manager for SK Gaming. I live in Cologne. 32 years old now. I'm doing this job since 2000, so eight years right now. Well, who is Alex when he's not in the office, when he's not working for SK? Mm, he's a family father. He's got a daughter. He's married uh, for four years now, happily married. Um, he is playing lots of football. He's a huge fan of football, watching professional football, huge fan of Bayern Munich, I have to say it. I know everybody hates me for it, but there's a story behind. Um, and I will just say one name and you figure out the rest. Sören Lerby, that's it. Um, I, don't, I, I do a lot of running. I have a dog, so I take her out for running. Um, I try to read a lot. And I'm a huge fan of US TV shows, which are aired on German TV as well where I don't watch them. Anyway, uh, that's basically what I do. When I got involved with SK, that was back in December 99, beginning of 2000. I never actually played for the team, though I had one official game, I think, in summer 2000 or 2001 with the Quake team at a LAN party. Um, and I actually was better than the worst player of our opponent. But um, that's about it. I never officially played under the flag of SK Gaming. So I, when I joined, it was crystal clear from the beginning, this guy has got no skills, which I, I think I proved it against uh, Christian Link a couple of weeks ago. So um, no, I was, I was there to do management things and to work on the brand of SK and stuff. So when I enter the office, the first thing I do is I check our accountings and, and try to, you know, see, okay, is there any partner we need to harass? Do we get uh, more money? Do we have to send out invoices? Are there any players to be paid? Are there any invoices to be paid? Are there any emergencies we need to take care of? Um, then I mo more or less get into my day-to-day -day business. I check my emails, um, look up if anything urgent regarding SK in general is happening. Do we need to sign new players? Do we need to re-sign players? Do we need to report to a partner, to a sponsor? Um, do we need to plan something like CBIT, games convention coming up? Do we have tournaments I need to attend? I should go. Do we have partner meetings I need to go to attend? So that's my day-to-day -day business. Most difficult decisions in my day-to-day -day business are decisions when it comes down to either you go this way or that way. When you have a clear picture of a direction you want to go, it's, it's easy to, uh, to move into this direction. But if you have to, for example, say whether we go with this player or that player, that makes it hard for me because I usually get personally involved. I'll give you an example. Last year, um, I mean, we hired uh, Rice, Minsik, to uh, work with our Warcraft team to lead us to a leading position again. Mm. Doing this job, we needed to cut out a couple of players and focus on the ones we have under contract right now. I was the one having to tell uh, Hot that we wouldn't re-sign him for 08, which was one of the hardest things for me to do with a player because I really like Mikhailu a lot. I mean, we have a past. He, I think he grew when he was in SK and I'm really happy for him that he just defended his title at SEC, at, at, at the CBIT in Hanover. And uh, that was one of the darker moments uh, in, in my way of, of having to choose this way or that way. For me, the key to make a good decision is my stomach. Most likely I know which direction is the right one, though it's, it's not always uh, zero, one. Most of the times it's 60, 40, but, or 70, 30, or maybe even 51, 49. But still, at the end of the day, I'm quite sure that most of the times I'm heading the right direction with my feeling. Switching a partner or um, working with his competitor in a market uh, is a hard thing for us to do as well. Though we are always prepared because what we do is, most of the times when we sign a contract, we usually talk to uh, the partner we work with and the competitor. And this is an open process, so everybody knows we are talking to both. That's our job. We wouldn't do, um, do a good job if we uh, weren't talking to both of them. That's for sure. So in a case like switching from Intel to AMD, what we recently did is 
we talked to AMD ATI for a very long time and uh, we talked to Intel about this for a very long time. So it's like, even though for the outside it's uh, a switch at a time, it's something that's prepared for a very, very long time and everybody is politically fine with us doing so. I mean, at the end of the day, I have to take care of SK Gaming uh, on an economical base. Um, and um, when we decided to sign the contracts with AMD, it was they were offering us the brightest future we could possibly think of. So that's the way we need to push this company to. And AMD is the perfect partner for it right now. It's the perfect matchup. And our old partner, like I had a meeting with Intel after we signed and they are totally fine with what we do because it's a rational decision. In a player, if he wants to satisfy me personally, he needs to be good. But on top of that, he needs to be dedicated to what he does. He needs to be emotionally attached to what he does and I need to feel that he you know he wants to bring something to the table to SK Gaming. Not all the players we, we signed um, do have this character 100% but some of them and um, I definitely want to mention them do have this character. If you look for players like Insomnia for example it's incredible the way he was loyal towards SK um, it's insane. Um, then the, the female team like last year, they were boot camping in this very room at these tables. Every morning I got into the office, I got to my desk, one of them was coming out giving me a cup of coffee. Sounds funny in the beginning, but at the end of the day we, were, we had such a close relationship, you know. We were there in Paris following them. Every match I was sitting behind them, which I did the year before as well, but um, this year was different. We were personally very, very close at the event. And winning the title, this title especially, meant a lot to me personally because they earned it. They worked so hard for it. They put, you know, they, they laid out their hearts while they were playing. Everything was inside. You want a good player to, to show, to have. And I'm, I'm sorry that I, I wasn't at CBIT now to see Lin play one of his best tournaments ever, the Extreme Masters. I mean, he won this title and there's no other player out there I wished would have taken this title. You know, it's players that really um, honor what we as an organization try to give them. And there are a lot of people in this organization working their asses off to, you know, to get financial, to get hardware, to get travel support to these players. And if we have the feeling they are giving something back, they don't have to win. But if we have the feeling they're doing everything to win, then it's, uh, it's something that pleases me personally. It's very difficult for us to work with players because they are not around. They are not sitting in our office. We can't talk to them on a day-to-day -day business. They don't understand what we do, um, how much we work to make everything work for them. Um, and sometimes you realize that they are sitting at home and wondering, okay, why aren't these guys solving my problem right now? But each day we could solve 50 personal problems from all the players all around the world we have under contract which is quite a lot to, to handle. And we must not forget that eSports at the time we're talking right now, it's only 10 years old and only the last four or five years maybe uh, are being considered to be professional. The rest would be amateur and something below, you know. So it's hard for us to, to always be there for a player 100%, even though we want to, but still we have to, you know, balance our efforts and try to do everything for, for the players. But it, there are times when we just have to say, okay, it's not possible today. We might have to take a week to solve this, this very problem of yours. And that's what's hard to you know, communicate to a player when you don't have him around, don't see him all the time, have to talk to him via MSN, via phone, IRC or via email. <music> Uh, if you look at players and the process of signing a player, there are different um, arguments you need to bring to the table. Number one, of course, the player needs to have an outstanding skill in what he does. He needs to be a really, really good gamer, a, a really good esports uh, guy. Um, that's something 
I can judge maybe by 75-80% only. But therefore we have specialists within each and every squad. We have people advising us, telling us, okay, this is the guy, this is the guy, this is the guy. Um, but a couple of other arguments come to the table as well. If a player is an asshole as a character, and no way you want to sign him because you are a team, you are a group. He needs to work with the group. He needs to function within the group. So this is a very strong argument as well. A player might be as good as he wants, but if he doesn't fit into SK team-wise, character-wise, no way we're going to sign him. Um, the th third argument, of course, it's a bit weaker than the others, but still it's important. And if a player is not able to leverage us, leverage a sponsor, and doesn't understand the, the dynamics of... Uh, you know, talking about a sponsor, producing him to the outer world, then it doesn't make sense at all working with him. That doesn't account for each and every uh, squad we have, it doesn't account for each and every player we have, but it is an argument as well. And I think um, talking of the last two arguments, character and the way uh, a player produces himself, these are arguments that I can judge 100% because I've been around um, for 10 years now in esports. I know most of the players and from talking to them, from seeing them at tournaments, seeing them within stress situations and everything, I can judge if the player fits into SK and what we want to be or doesn't fit into SK. Mm -hmm.